Thank you for joining today's Girlfriend Therapy Session. Listen as Kwanzaa educate, encourage, and empower you to live a faith-led life. Here's your host, Kwanzaa. Welcome to Girlfriend Therapy. I'm your host, Kwanzaa, and today we begin part three of the six-part series on how to live a faith-led life. The foundation scripture for this series comes from 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, and it simply says that we live by faith and not by sight. So the topic for today is confidence. When we think about confidence, we often think about uh, what it looks like in the natural. We, we all know people who look confident and they do things that, you know, that appears you know, to, that they are confident. And you, know, you think of people and say, oh, he, he's confident or she's confident. Um, but we have to begin to think about what does a confident person look like in the spiritual? You know, what does confidence look like in the spiritual, in the life of someone who is endeavoring to live a faith-led life? What does that level of confidence look like? In Hebrews 10 and 35, it tells us um, to therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. It says, for you have need of confidence so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. And so it says you have to have confidence to receive the promises of God. Uh, I think it is interesting or, or maybe not interesting, but I get, I don't know. You decide um, whether it's interesting or not. But scripture tells us that the enemy seeks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And what he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy is what God is doing in and through you. And so the enemy could steal your confidence and he can really disrupt and thwart what God is doing in you. He can really disrupt and thwart your purpose, your entire purpose and, and the reason that you were created. And so confidence is really important. Um, uh, the dictionary defines confidence as a feeling or belief that you can rely on someone or something. Um, and in the case of the believer, what we are relying and believing in is God. We are believing in his word and we're believing in his promises. Um, when you think about just some of the day-to-day, -day, you know, simple examples that we use where we're... Um, where we're just so confident, you know, if you, when, you know, when, when you, uh, uh, you know, when you get in your car, you're confident that when you turn, put the key in and turn, that it's going to come on. When you sit in a chair, you're confident that you're going to sit down and the chair's going to be, you know, it's going to be able to hold you. You know, we have such confidence in our mates and we have confidence in our jobs and we have confidence in our ability without even thinking. Um, and in, this, in, in the things of God, that's the level of confidence that we have to have in him. We have to believe that his word, we have to be so confident in his word that we don't even think twice about it. So in my last um, uh, episode, I did a, I, I kind of talked about the, um, the, the diagnosis that I got, the unfavorable diagnosis. And I, I wasn't super confident or as confident as I needed to be because when the doctor gave the diagnosis, I immediately began to um, uh, manifest the symptoms and I didn't, it didn't dawn on me. If, if that's the right way of saying it, that my confidence should have totally pushed me past the point of questioning, but to the point of just this complete unshakable assurance, this unshakable assurance that what God has promised is truth. And in a case of health, you know, God has promised long life. God has promised healing. And so as a believer, as a Christian living a faith-led life, my confidence, what would it would have, would have, should have looked like is that my confidence would have kicked in the moment the doctor gave an unfavorable um, diagnosis, that I would have spoke the word of God, you know, using my faith, faith being in my mouth and in my heart and speaking the word of God. And um, so I would have spoke life to my situation. Like I said before, the doctor says sickness, I say health. The doctor said death, I said life, you know, um, and, and I should have immediately spoken life to my situation. And it should have come just instinctively, you know, it should have been um, instinctive. There should have not been a moment of pause or a moment of questioning. It should have just, my faith should have kicked in. And then I should have walked in full confidence of what the word of God says about health, healing, and long life. Um, the apostle Paul, I think he is really an incredible example of confidence exercise. When you read the, the scriptures that he's written, um, or the books in the Bible that he's written and you just read his words and how confident he is in the promises of God and confident he is in the word of God is so reassuring. Like it really is just completely reassuring. And 
Um, I love in Philippians 1 and 6 that it talks about, he says that, you know, for I am confident of this very thing, that he who had began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. He said, I am confident in this thing. I am confident in this thing. I love that. And you have to have confidence to be able to say things like, um, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's confidence there. You know, there's this unshakable assurance that I can do anything because Christ strengthens me. And I love Roman 8, Romans 8 and 28. And it says that, um, and we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So all of these statements, all of these scriptures are, are, are scriptures of, you know, just great confidence. You know, this unshakable assurance that God is who ex exactly who he says that he is. That Christ is exactly who he says that he is. That his word is exactly what his word is. And that is confidence, just having this assurance that everything that God has promised for the believer, for the man and woman of God, everything that he has promised, it is so, and that we receive it in the name of Jesus. So I love those scriptures that really talk about confidence. Um, and, 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 but you can't lose sight of the idea that the enemy sets to steal and kill and destroy your confidence. Uh, or, and you can't uh, lose sight of the fact that what happens in the life of a believer, even one who's endeavoring to live a faith-led life, if their confidence is shaken. For me, um, I've always been really confident, and I still, there are areas where I'm just extremely confident in, um, but then there are those areas that I kind of still need some spiritual maturity to, you know, to develop a little more, um, to develop a little more in. And sometimes you don't realize that you know, your confidence is shaken until it's actually shaken. I had a situation, I'm just a share of personal testimony on me and confidence. Um, I had a situation where um, um, I, I spoke at a, an event. And, I, and when I speak, I'm always very careful to make sure that, you know, that I, it's biblically sound, you know, that what I say is, is rooted and grounded in scripture. And, um, and, and that the Holy, that it's Holy Spirit led, you know, I don't, I, I, I said before, I, I don't speak or do very much of anything outside of the leaning of the Holy Spirit. You know, that is my, especially when I'm talking about in things in, 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 in the faith and in, in spiritual matters, I don't do anything outside of the ushering and leading of the Holy Spirit. And so I spoke at this particular event um, and there was a, a young lady or a woman who was there who I was familiar with. We were friends. I, you know, felt like she was a friend of mine, sister in the faith and um, and, and after I spoke, you know, I spoke, I, I talked with her and she, uh, she said something that kind of shook my confidence. And, and it, it was something to the effect of, um, like it wasn't direct, but it was kind of, uh, what is it like vague. And she said something like, uh, oh, you need to, um, what did she say? You, you need to, uh, you need to get in church. And I'm thinking like, well, what do you mean by that? And at the time I actually, I think I was in between churches. Like I wasn't a member of a church. I had just left a church and, you know, was visiting, looking um, to, to be a part of another church or join another church. And so at this point in time, I was kind of in between churches and she said, you know, you need to get in church. And so, you know, of course, you know, I'm kind of like, well, what do you mean? I, like I just spoke and I know that I take great care in ensuring that what I say and what I do on a platform of ministry that it is, um, it, like I said, that it is it's biblically sound and, and, and scripturally based. And um, so I asked, I said, well, what do you mean? And she kind of said, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, and so at this point now, my confidence is like, okay, did I say something inaccurate? Because God forbid that I ever get on a platform and uh, and say anything that will hurt or, or bruise or, or cause anyone to stumble um, in the faith, you know, God forbid that I do that. And so I asked her, I said, well, what, you know, why, why do you say that? What do you mean? And she said, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And so for the next couple of days, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, what did you mean by that? You know, <laughs> but I noticed that, um, that I began to question and really second guess, like, all right, and, and try to recall, okay, what did I say? Did I say anything that was inaccurate? Did I say anything, you know, my confidence in the message that I had just delivered, and my confidence was shaken a bit, and um, and, and unfortunately, um, that that shake in confidence or that shift in my confidence kind of dragged out for a little bit, and so I would got to the point where I was second guess, and I wasn't as sure 
or you know um, 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 uh, certain in some of the decisions like I would pause in areas where I never paused before you know I would kind of you know just that that moment of eh, you know um, where I never had that before and so the enemy through this woman's comment the enemy uh, used that as an opportunity to try to steal what God was doing in me and through me and um, and, and, and eventually you know um, or with the intent of stealing and destroying and killing, you know, what God was birthing in me. And so sometimes even as believers, we don't understand how, again, when we speak something to people, we have to learn to speak life because you don't know what the, how the enemy will use your words against that person and not just against that person because we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but how he will use your words against that person's purpose. And so we have to be very careful in knowing to speak life to people. Um, and if there is room for correction, because scripture talks about correction as well, and if there is a need for correction, we have to be able to say it in, in a way that, that still speaks life. Like you can correct and still speak life. And so as, as believers, we have to use wisdom, which is one of the other things that we'll talk about. Uh, we have to be able to use wisdom even when correcting our brethren. You know, we have to be able to, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us and to us because I'm not afraid of correction. I mean, I have, um, you know, spiritual mentors in my life who correct me. And, and it's amazing because when they begin to correct, like you, you already know, you know, I was talking with my spiritual mentor, um, I guess a couple of weeks ago now. And we were talking about, uh, you know, something that I was I was kind of, you know, wrestling with. And um, and, and he began to just minister to me. And um, there was correction there and I was able to receive it because one, before he even began to speak, I understood what he was, where he was going, you know, and that's that spiritual maturity. Like sometimes when we're out of order, we know that we're out of order or when we're out of balance, we know that we're out of balance. And when we have someone who we know cares about us and who can speak life to us, even in correction, and we can hear and receive from them. Uh, we know that that's a great thing and that takes us to another level of spiritual maturity. And so, um, and you can build confidence. I think that in ministry, you have to have confidence. And I'm not talking about a swag or, a, you know, I can do um, because I am. I'm talking about confidence in who God is and what he's promised and knowing that it is for you and that nobody can shake that, you know, um, nobody can shake that. I think about early in my Christian walk as well. Um, I, and I realized that the enemy has always set out to steal my confidence because in the natural, I've always been so confident. So to take that confidence and add it to a spirit, you know, add, add it to the uh, spiritual matters, you know, um, it, it, it really is unshakable. You know, it is very much unshakable. And um, so if the enemy could steal that, then, you know, he, he knows that he can really disrupt, even if. Even if it's not to disrupt, disrupt or destroy, but he can most certainly delay what God is doing in you. Um, I remember when I was a, you know, very, very new Christian, and um, I, uh, there was a young woman that, um, you know, I, when I first started going to church, I was about 19 years old. Start first start going to church on my own. I was, of course, raised in the church, uh, but you know, to be 19 and to really make that decision and that declaration um, to serve Christ for yourself was a little different than being five and four and you know your grandmother taking you to church it's so kind of kind of different um but i you know 19 years old had begun going to church and um i was excited about what this new uh, journey in the faith what it looked you know what it held for me you know and there was a young woman that i kind of gravitated towards um she she was much older than i was but she still was a young woman um and i kind of gravitated towards her and uh she would um um you know when, when i got to church i would make sure I got to sit next to her and things like that. And I remember I got pregnant um, with my son and uh, my husband and I, my husband's now, you know, at the time we weren't married. Um, we were dating, we were boyfriend and girlfriend and I got pregnant with my son. And I remember this woman telling me that uh, God was not going to honor my pregnancy or not honor my baby. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, to this day, I have no idea what she meant by that. But what I heard is that, um, that salvation wasn't for me and my child because I got pregnant out of wedlock. And that was like, 
you know, which is crazy because salvation is for those who were not saved, you know, salvation is for those who were living in sin, you know, um, and I have, you know, I've given my life to Christ and unbeknownst to me, when I gave my life to Christ, I was already pregnant when I was baptized, um, and the, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I was already pregnant, so, you know, my son, by extension of me, received that baptism, and, um, you know, and of course, as he, once he was born and all that, he, he was uh, baptized, and, but that's a whole nother story, but my point is, is that through the extension of me, my my son received salvation and my sins were forgiven. But her response to all of that, you know, she spoke, um, she didn't speak life to me. She didn't speak life to my situation. And I think that um, sometimes as believers, we become so uh, slippery in our speaking. You know, our tongue becomes so slick that we just say things that are, one, not consistent with the word of God, but, and, and so that's why it's important for people, um, believers to know what the word says. It's important for you to understand the word and read the word for yourself because people can, um, say little slick stuff that will knock you off your spiritual square and, um, and then kind of knock you out of your, you know, knock a little confidence out of you and then you have to get back there. Um, and so confidence really is extremely important. And like the scripture in Hebrews 10 and 35 says, it says, don't throw away your confidence because it has a great reward. And that reward is you receiving what God has promised. So as a believer, confidence is extremely important in living a faith-led life because you can be walking down the path and, and, and to endeavor to live a faith-led life, just as I was, and just as I am, um, but just as I was in the, at the time when this woman spoke uh, against me and, 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 and shook my confidence. You can be endeavoring to live a faith-led life, but then the moment someone says something that shakes your confidence, now you're second-guessing, now you're, you know, that delay and that, um, you know, that disruption of your of, of your purpose, you know, uh, begins to, to kind of get, uh, take place. And if you're not careful, if you don't know how to rebound um, from that knock in confidence, then you could very much, you know, uh, find yourself trying to regain that confidence. And in the midst of it, you know, kind of, um, it, you know, it can, it can appear to be a bit of a struggle. And so as we continue in this series, um, you know, we talked about uh, faith and what that looks like in living a faith led life. Um, just finished telling you about confidence again. Look at the word from a spiritual perspective. You know, confidence, like I said, is a word that we tend to look at in the natural, but look at it from a spiritual perspective and, and understand, okay, what does that look like for me in the spirit? You know, how confident am I in the spirit? And praying through the Holy Spirit that your confidence be restored, that your, your confidence be, that you be built up in your confidence. And that when you speak the word of God, you can speak it confidently, you know, and you can really, truly know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that you say that and you walk in that as confidently as you do when you sit in a chair. You know, without thought. It's like I absolutely can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Like, what are you talking about? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's confidence. And that's the level of confidence that you need in order to live a faith-led life. And so um, as we prepare for our third or fourth message in this series of how to live a faith-led life the next thing that we'll talk about is courage courage is extremely important as well all of these things are important so you'll hear me say that probably in every message that this is extremely important and all of them are extremely important which is why i'm talking to them individually it's important to have faith as you live a faith-led life it's important to have confidence as you live a faith-led life it's important to have courage as you live a faith-led life. It's important to have wisdom and it is important to have discernment as you live a faith-led life. So I pray that this message was a blessing to you. Um, again, please take notes, begin to recognize for yourself what your spiritual confidence looks like. Um, pray in the spirit that God, um, that the Holy Spirit may develop and build in you a level of confidence that will uh, put you right in your path, you know, to receive the promises of God. Um, so until next time, I bid you guys God's best blessings. I pray for you as you pray for me. And the next series that we will talk about will be on courage. So until next time, blessings. Thank you for tuning in to Girlfriend Therapy. I hope you enjoyed today's message. 
To learn more about Girlfriend Therapy Ministry, or if you would like to submit a prayer request or sow a seed, please visit our website at www.girlfriendtherapy.org.